Technology School in Oakland. The Chase Center, David Welch, KCBS. Construction is on hold on the site of People's Park in Berkeley, an appellate court issuing a stay following a violent confrontation there this past week where a perimeter fence was torn down in less time than it took the university to put it up. KCBS's Jim Taylor returned to check out the landscape. Well, the place still sounds like people's bars. There are just a handful of people living here now. Amid the downed trees and the mountains of wood chips dumped by the university, on this land, on which the university wants to build housing, has for half a century, which is how long Charles has been here, living in the park off and on. And I mean, they need housing, but everybody's saying this is green open space in a community that needs it. What are you going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going to be here no matter what comes on. I mean, this is my community. So you'll be here tomorrow? Oh, yeah. Next year? Yeah. Now, this is my home. You know, my wife and daughter and I, my daughter grew up here. Lisa, another longtime resident, says she's not leaving. We're, we're, we're here to defend the park, and uh, we'll continue to do so. At People's Park in Berkeley, Jim Taylor, KCBS. Elon Musk says his planned $44 billion takeover of Twitter should move forward if the company can confirm some details about how it measures whether user accounts are spam bots or real people. The billionaire and Tesla CEO has been trying to back out of his April agreement to buy the social media giant, leading Twitter to sue him to complete the acquisition. Plus, countersuit accusing Twitter of misleading his team about the true size of its user base and other problems he said amounted to fraud and breach of contract. Both sides are headed toward an October trial in a Delaware court. Coming up on KCBS, what some votes this week in Indiana and Kansas mean when it comes to abortion. KCBS News Time is 12.45. Right now, it's time for sports. Baseball playing before a season-high Coliseum crowd of more than 40,000 people Saturday. The A's fell to the Giants, 7-3. Soccer, the Earthquakes tied to Austin, 3-3 in San Jose. With more sports, here's Ted Ring. Things have been rolling along at 49ers training camp, but one of the stories has been concerned over the amount of interceptions being thrown, especially by second-year quarterback Trey Lance. As for head coach Kyle Shanahan, he doesn't love the interceptions, but it's not something he's going to be overreactive about. This part of camp, you know, you can't block the alignment without pads on, um, so I don't like them just sitting there and curling up into a field position and not letting it go. You know, I like to be able to coach stuff. There's been a number of tips out there and stuff. There's sometimes guys don't break their route off the right way, and I like guys who don't wait to see what the court their whiteout's going to do. I like guys who rip it based off the right decision, and then you coach from there. Another aspect of this is that the 49ers defense is expected to be really, really good this year, which from Kyle Shanahan's viewpoint is not a bad thing. I'm also the head coach, so I'm very happy with our defense getting those picks. We make a lot of dumb decisions, and that's if we do make a lot of dumb decisions, um, you got to change it as a coach. And if they aren't, then you learn how to call plays differently. But um, there, I know there's been some picks, um, but it hasn't been a concern on so far. The 49ers open their preseason Friday night, hosting the Packers. At the sports desk, Ted Ramey, KCBS. Never miss a headline. Never miss a story. Never miss. Now on the Odyssey app and favorite KCBS to stream the Bay Area's news station whenever and wherever. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y and favorite KCBS. Standing up for what's right. Helping out when things go wrong. Raising our voices alone or together.
you. Let's see what, if anything, is slowing you down right now. We go to Frank Munich at the KCBS traffic desk. Well, we are still looking at a problem on westbound 80 just past University Avenue. Traffic barely getting by. Uh, a crash uh, which uh, involves uh, at least uh, two cars uh, and is uh, still blocking lanes. Again, that's westbound 80 just before University Avenue. Uh, we have had the two left lanes blocked by that, and we're seeing very slow traffic approaching the scene. Uh, problem continuing to be dealt with in Martinez, eastbound 4, just before Alhambra Avenue. Uh, that's a uh, crash involving a car that slammed into the center divide and wound up uh, off of the shoulder. We have increase involved. Uh, we uh, still have emergency crews on scene dealing with that. Uh, and uh, we have some good news. We had an earlier crash on northbound 280 at Ray Street, uh, which had, uh, had a traffic break being put in place uh, back on Highway 87 to remove it. Well, mission accomplished. That crash is now being cleared. Your next update at 1258 on the traffic leader at KCBS. Here's your KCBS six-day forecast today. Clouds will decrease later this morning. It will become partly cloudy at the coast. It will become sunny along the bay. It will be sunny all day. Inland highs mid to upper 60s at the coast, 70s along the bay, mid 80s inland. And then for the coming week, partly to mostly cloudy at the coast and near the bay, mostly sunny inland. Highs for the most part in the upper 60s at the coast, 70s along the bay, 80s inland through Tuesday, and then Wednesday on into next weekend, you can expect highs inland approaching 90 degrees. Right now in San Francisco and Livermore, 61 degrees. Saratoga, 63 degrees. Novato, 59. Hotland Bay, it's 57 degrees. Traffic and weather together on the 8th on All News 1069 and AM 740 KCBS. Dixie Clay is at the KCBS editor's desk, KCBS News Time 1250. An author who has written extensively about the battle over abortion rights says we're seeing a disconnect between lawmakers who want to ban the procedure and voters who support a woman's right to choose. KCBS's Eric Thomas reports votes in Indiana and Kansas last week are shining examples. Indiana's vote was in the Republican-controlled legislature, which approved a sweeping and near-total ban on abortion, except in cases of rape or incest or when the mother's life is at risk. And some ultra-conservative lawmakers even tried to get those exceptions removed. I think there's a paranoia um, within the pro-life or anti-abortion movement that if you have health exceptions, that people will use them to get abortions for other reasons. UC Davis law professor Mary Ziegler is the author of Abortion and the Law in America, Roe versus Wade to the Present. She says when voters in Kansas rejected an effort to enact restrictions there, it showed lawmakers and voters were not on the same page. Kansas is a red state and the vote implies conservatives may have made a political miscalculation. Some politicians believe that, you know, your average voter may not like an abortion ban, but they won't actually vote on that basis, right? They'll prioritize something else. Ziegler says the November midterm elections may show us whether that assumption is right or wrong. Eric Thomas, KCBS. Hospitals are seeing a growing number of preteens suffering mental health issues. We get more on that from Charles Feldman with our Odyssey sister station, KNX in Los Angeles. To keep us so young, they have already lived through the trauma of a once-in-a-century pandemic, which some experts are saying may be largely fueling this explosion in mental health issues afflicting preteens. We've seen an increase of anxiety, depression, especially within that preteen age from 10 to 13. Rob Gent is Chief Clinical Officer of Embark Behavioral Health, who tells us some of the things parents need to be on the lookout for. Excessive mood swings, and that can be from excessive sadness, apathy. Another thing parents should be aware to, changes in language. Children who start framing most things in negative terms. NOAA's Office of National Marine Sanctuaries has initiated the designation process for three additional areas in the U.S. KCBS's Margie Schaefer.
well, just one of those areas is along the Central California coast. For the first time, there's been a tribally-led nomination from the Northern Chumash Tribal Council. The proposed Chumash National Marine Sanctuary is on the Central Coast and would close the gap between the Channel Islands and Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary. It's a significant designation. Not only do they protect these very special areas, but they're an important place to engage people in the conservation of our ocean. Also being considered for designation, Lake Ontario and the Great Lakes to protect historic shipwrecks. There is one, this is a really exciting one too, off the coast of uh, New York City, Hudson Canyon. It's an area that, of our ocean that has, it doesn't have too much protection, and so there's an opportunity to protect this really, really beautiful canyon. In the coming weeks, NOAA will release draft documents and the public will be able to comment. Any formal designation would occur in the winter of 2023. Marty Schaefer, KCBS. I'm Larry Magan, the Connect Safety Report. The Connect Safety Report is typically about online safety and security, but financial security is important too, especially during these inflationary times. And you can use technology to help you save money. For example, CDNet has an article called How to Create a Grocery Budget with links to online resources like Mint, YNAB, Honeydew, and Pocket Guard. I use Mint, which is owned by Intuit, to keep track of my finances. And it has excellent tools to help you develop and stick to a budget. For some people, grocery shopping online can save them money because it can help you avoid impulse shopping. But be sure to consider any delivery fees which you might be able to avoid by opting for in-store or curbside pickup. There's a link to the VDNet article at connectsafely.org slash radio. With the Connect Safely Report, I'm Larry Magid for CBS News. A flexible work schedule is holding a higher standard. 53% of employees would prioritize flexibility, while 56% would be a higher salary. That's the results from a study by Crown Plaza Hotels and Resorts. Vice President of Global Brand Management, Ginger Taggart, said the desire for blended travel is pushing the demand. People working from all different locations, going on a business trip and adding on leisure stays, and then actually planning a leisure or long weekend and deciding to work remotely for a couple days. The report reveals millennials and Gen Z consumers are the most interested in working for a company that offers frequent travel or blended travel possibilities. The new work style is prompting hotels to up their game. We're heavily renovating our entire estate, 50% globally. We're really leaning into the needs of travel. Crown Plaza also has more than 100 new hotels in the pipeline during the next three years. Lisa Mateo, Bloomberg Business for KCBS. Closing in on 
1 a.m. We head to the KCBS Traffic Center for a check of the roads with Frank Munich. And uh, we're going to head back out to uh, Westbound at uh, University Avenue, where we have the crash just now cleared. All lanes are reopened in the wake of an injury crash there, which has been blocking the two left lanes. It was the second successive crash. Uh, in that area, so that uh, has really tied up traffic uh, for the better part of the last two hours on westbound 80 between Berkeley and Emeryville. We're still seeing slow traffic on westbound 80 approaching University in the wake of that crash. A new problem in Milton Beach, southbound 101, just before the 237 split. Uh, two car crash on the right hand shoulder. We have crews on scene. That may be a bit of a visual hazard, but no lanes are blocked. Your next update is 108 on the traffic leader, KCBS. Partly to mostly cloudy overnight, areas of fog and a chance of drizzle at the coast, lows upper 50s and 60s. Later on today, clouds will decrease and will become partly cloudy at the coast. Many about the bay, many all day, and highs ranging from the upper 60s at the coast to the mid 80s. Sunday, August 7th, 2022, coming up on KCBS. I'm Keith Fanconi in the wake of the federal government's declaration of a monkeypox health emergency. Local health experts see new reason for optimism. I'm Alice Wirtz. Community members took a hike with their East Bay congressional representative in the great outdoors. And at this hour, the U.S. Senate is debating the Inflation Reduction Act. I'm Peter Finch. CBS News is next. When you need to know. AM, KFRC FM, and HD1. One o'clock. CBS News on the hour. Presented by Indeed.com. I'm Tom Foti in Washington, where the U.S. Senate is in overnight and weekend session as Democrats try to pass a completely partisan money bill with some 700 pages of detail about taxes, energy, climate, and many other things. The Democrats need all 50 of their votes, plus that of Vice President Harris, to get that done. Here's correspondent Natalie Brand. The bill would provide new incentives to invest. decades. Democrats argue it would also reduce the federal deficit, raising revenue through tax provisions, including increased enforcement and a 15% minimum tax on large companies. Senate Democrats are misreading the American people's outrage and mandate for yet another, yet another reckless taxing and spending spree. Changes are coming to Rob Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, after that mass shooting that left 19 students and two teachers dead. Its controversial principal is now out. Reporter Chris Fox. The news of Principal Mandy Gutierrez's reassignment coming from the Uvalde School District. She'll now serve as the Assistant Director of Special Education. The Texas State House investigative report into the shooting was critical of Gutierrez, saying the school had a culture of non-compliance with safety regulations. Prior to that, she passed over firing at board meetings. The issues that brought us to May 24th are deeply rooted, long standing, and we need change. Chris Fox for CBS News, Austin. And news now from overseas. First, from the Middle East, correspondent Mark Strassman. The State Department is urging both Israelis and Palestinians to cool it. To militants in Gaza. Militants responded by firing rockets into Israel, most of them intercepted by the country's Iron Dome defenses. But there have been sirens this morning in Jerusalem. Next, the now nearly half-year-old war in Ukraine. Correspondent Charlie Daggett is in Odessa. He tells us the southern city of Mykolaiv appears to be Russia's next goal. Ukrainian forces have been able to 